it's back. That's right, by popular demand, the Home Lab Challenge is back. And by popular demand, I pretty much just mean that it was a lot of fun and I wanted to do it again. You may remember that about a year ago, I did a challenge where I had four weeks and just $200 to try and build the best home lab possible. And I didn't do it by myself. I went head to head with my arch nemesis, Brett, AKA Radal. And well, we're back and doing it again, but this time we're going to mix things up just a bit. This might be like the perfect pickup for this home lab challenge. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. I am $94 over budget, and I've already started buying stuff. Dang it. Brett, Home Lab Challenge Season 2, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, welcome, Mr. Haven, to Season 2 Home Lab Challenge 2025 Electric Boogaloo. Yes. Official title, right there. Basically the same rules, same premise. This time we have a bit more money. We're starting with $500 plus $200 from our awesome sponsor, Server Part Deals, who's sponsoring the entire project. Yeah, we did change things up a little bit. So last time we had a month and we kind of broke it up. We had a wheel spin, things like that. We've simplified it a bit. So now we just have two weeks. Obviously we can't use our YouTuber status. We can't abuse recycling centers and no flipping. And this may be controversial because people like it, but we didn't want to turn this into a who's better at flipping and selling computer parts. And by we, you mean you and a lot of people in the comments, because I was not a part of this no flipping nonsense, but whatever. We, we talked about this as I was like, we were trying to set the rules for this and we weren't gonna please everybody. So there may be rules you don't like, that's okay. Just en just enjoy it. This is for fun, guys. Just enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And Colin, I guess you wanna tell people the difference that we have in terms of how we determine the winner this time? Yeah, we do have some benchmarks that at the very end of the competition will each run on both of our home lab setups. But it's, a, it's sort of like a whose line is it anyway, because the, the points don't matter. Essentially, we're going to have the results from those benchmarks, but really the final decision is going to come down to our guest judge, who is, drum roll, <laughs> Jeff Geerling from Jeff Geerling. Uh, it's just his name, but he's been gracious enough to step in as our judge and determine the winner. But home labs can be a little bit nuanced at times, so he's going to take into account all of the objective numbers and everything from the benchmarks, and then give his opinion on who he thought had the best value home lab. Also this time around, we thought it would be fun to sort of approach this like someone might actually be building a home lab for the first time, and there's a decent chance you might already have some hardware laying around, like maybe an old case and power supply from your old gaming PC, which is one of our starting items, which well, we got off of Amazon, not necessarily an actual old gaming PC. We also get some other bonus starting items, but for this, we actually get to pick between either an old laptop, a Wi-Fi router, or just a one terabyte hard drive. And I believe you selected the laptop, correct? Uh I did, I went with my wife's old 2013 MacBook Pro, and this was just to simulate a lot of people have old tech laying around, so that was my piece of old tech, so that's what I went with. Yeah, and for me, I, uh, I figure a lot of people might have an old router lying around that they've upgraded to or their ISP had a better one or something. So I picked this because I was really just kind of hoping it would knock out all of the networking stuff in one fell swoop and then I could just focus on everything else. So there it is, $500, two weeks, Two dudes and a dream. Home Lab Challenge 2025. I'm ready to go, man. So I guess I'll see you back in two weeks. Good luck. Two weeks. Good, good luck. You'll need it. I, I will. All right, it's time to figure out what the heck I'm going to do. And to hopefully help do that, I have this spreadsheet I made, which is pretty simple. I can just start listing items and that'll deduct it from our total amount so we can see how much money we have remaining. Now for one of my starting items, I picked the wireless router. Unfortunately, that's not going to cost me anything. I'm actually going to be using a Dynalink router that I used in a previous OpenWRT video that's fortunately already flashed with OpenWRT, so it saves me a little bit of time, but that's going to be able to handle all my router stuff, my Wi-Fi, and also act as a little four port switch. Now, I'm probably going to try to aim for some more networking with the budget we have, but for right now, we at least know that we have that and it works and I can move on. We also have our case and our power supply, but having no idea what we should put in there yet, I actually want to start off with storage because, well, I think a big portion of our budget's going to go to storage and I'd like to figure out what our options are there so then I can hopefully kind of build a system around that. And fortunately, like I mentioned, Server Part Deals has been awesome and offered to sponsor this entire challenge. And with that, we get essentially a $200 gift card that we get to spend at Server Part Deals. 
Now, if you haven't heard of server part deals, you should definitely check them out. They're awesome. They have lots of great deals on manufacturer recertified drives, like I've talked about in the past, as well as some seller refurbished drives and even new drives. And with those deals, you can sometimes buy even more hard drives or have some cold spares or something, or even just buy higher capacity drives. One thing I love about server part deals is that all of their hard drives go through pretty rigorous testing, where they not only check smart data, but they also run read write tests, selective sector scans, and even performance benchmarks to verify the drives are performing as they should. They also have an excellent Excellent support team, which can help if you do run into any issues or if you need to submit an RMA request. And they offer free two-day shipping and some of the best packaging I've ever seen. So you know your drives are going to get to you safe. So like I said, if you're looking to buy some hard drives and you haven't checked out server part deals, make sure to go check it out. You can use my link down in the description and use my code Haven to get $5 off any order. All right, so I'm on server part deals website. I've already sorted hard drives by SATA. And uh, I doubt we're going to be able to afford uh, many of these higher capacity drives with our budget, even with the bonus $200. So I think I'm just going to filter uh, some of these lower capacity drives here. So we could buy some new four terabyte drives. I think instead I might go with these HGST Ultra Stars. Uh, they're 12 terabytes. They're not manufacturer recertified drives, they're seller refurbished, but I believe these go through the same testing process. And one cool thing about server part deals that's unlike a lot of other sketchier brands you might find on eBay or something is that they don't wipe any of the smart data. Oh yeah, it says it right there, looky there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with two of these. So these are 134.99. And if I do two of these, we still have $530 left in our budget to build out a system to actually put these drives in and then probably at least another system. It's not a ton of money, but I think we can probably make it happen. So I think the next thing to do is try to look and figure out a good system that we could actually put this in because I don't think, hold on. All right, yeah, I don't think this case, this is our old gaming PC case. I don't think this has a ton of room for drives. Oh, those fall right out. Okay, here's our, uh... Our, our old power supply that's still in the wrapping. Yeah, this case does fit ATX motherboards, I believe, but it does not have a room for drives. There's some screw holes down here that look like they might be for a hard drive. I don't think I wanna put hard drives in here. So I think I'm gonna take a look around on eBay, maybe some Facebook Marketplace, and see if there's anything that catches my attention that might be a good find for a NAS system to put these two hard drives in. Okay, so I looked around for just a little bit and I ended up finding this system here. Seems like they have a few of them. There are some Dell Precision systems, so this 3630, and it's a little bit weird because that's an Inspiron, not a Precision, so I'm not exactly sure. But I am interested in these 3630s because I looked these up and it turns out they actually have three drive bays, not just two, which, which could be kind of nice. And right now for the eighth gen i3, so that would be like an i3-8100, I'm assuming, they're only asking $60, which says it comes with 16 gigs of memory. That's not all that exciting, but if I could get an eighth gen i3 uh, with 16 gigs of RAM and the ability to have three hard drives, that'd be plenty for our two under $100, that would be pretty sick. Okay, so I reached out to the seller to see if they were still available. And he said, I think we're working on a deal to have them all sold. I just sent over a list with all the form factors and sizes to a customer waiting to hear what they say. I said, dang, let me know. And then he basically said, hey, are you just wanting one unit? And I was like, yeah, ideally one of the eighth gens. And he was like, well, let me go see if I have it. And basically he ended up coming back and saying, I don't have an eighth gen, but I could sell you one of the ninth gens for the same price. And he said, come on by. So I'm going to come on by, go on by. I'm gonna go try to get this system. All right, so I did get it for $60. And if we open it up, you can indeed see there is a hard drive there. It's a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda. I doubt we're gonna do much with that, but we do have now three empty drive bays, and I even talked them into just giving me another one of these little caddies because it only had one, but they were generous enough to give me a second one for free. And I couldn't do it one-handed, but you can swing this uh, power supply thing up, and now we can see we should have, I don't know if I can get the focus to work, but we indeed have 16 gigs of DDR4, and what I'm hoping is a working i3-9100 underneath this cooler. But there's only one way to find out, so let's get this home and see if it works. All right, so I've got it hooked up, ready to test. Uh, I took out the one terabyte hard drive and replaced it with a little Linux Mint installer just so we can hop into something that I know what it is. Uh, all right, so let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. I didn't press the button hard enough, I guess. Hey, and there we have it. We have 16 gigs of RAM and we have an i3-9100. They didn't scam me, yay. 60 bucks, wow, what a deal. It's not all that often you see an M.2 NVMe socket and a PCI slot right next to each other. Interesting. All right, we are in Linux Mint, it's working just fine. It is dead silent. 
And we're sitting at a, a cozy little 10 to 11 watts idle right now. I like quite literally think this might be like the perfect pickup for this home lab challenge. I am so pumped. Now it's time to figure everything else out. All right, so at this point we have our two 12 terabyte drives ordered. We have a NAS system to put them in. We don't have an SSD to boot TrueNAS or anything from, but we'll get to that here in a bit. But uh, I wanna have at least two systems. I'd like to have one system that's just dedicated to storage and then another that can run a lot of different containers or virtual machines and such. And so I was trying to think of like what would be a good balance of like performance and efficiency. And I actually remembered there was a, a CPU I was considering ordering for a different project that I went ahead and just pulled the trigger on to try to build this around, which it already came in the mail. All right, this is a Ryzen 3 5300G. And you might be wondering why I went with this, and there's a few reasons. First of all, it's built off of the Zen 3 architecture, so I'm hoping the efficiency is going to be pretty good. And, and not just the Zen 3 architecture, but I believe, based off of a Wolfgang Channel's video I watched where I think he was talking about one of the Ryzen 3000 processors or something, I learned that a lot of these Ryzen APUs are actually built in a monolithic design. So there's just a single die versus being chiplets like a lot of the other standard desktop chips, which can help with efficiency. So I may lose in the sense of like total CPU horsepower with this only being a four core eight thread chip, but I'm hoping I'll win the efficiency battle. Also, because like I mentioned, it's an APU. This does have integrated graphics, which Ryzen's integrated graphics aren't the best, but it's potentially better than nothing. So I bought this on eBay and not including tax per the rules, I spent exactly $69. Nice. Which at this point meant I had right at $400 to finish the rest of my build. Well, at least I thought I did, but I'll get to that in just a second. I tried to find the cheapest AM4 motherboard that I could, and I actually ended up finding this ASRock board on Amazon. I believe it was actually through the Amazon warehouse or whatever it's called now, but I got it for right at $60. And this board's not going to be anything amazing, but I believe right out of the box, it supports Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. So we should be good to go in that regard. And then for memory, I could have tried to find like a 32 gig kit or something, but well, it actually had a different idea. I already had 16 gigs of DDR4 in the Dell system that I bought. And on this Ryzen machine, I may run a few virtual machines, but honestly, I'm probably going to stick with running a lot of containers. And so I don't have to have a ton of memory. However, if I installed TrueNAS on the Dell system, well, having a lot of RAM for caching could be really beneficial, especially when it comes to some of the benchmarks that are going to measure SMB performance. So my thought here was rather than buying RAM for that Ryzen system that I'm going to build, I just take the 16 gigs of DDR4 from the Dell system, put them in the Ryzen system, and then see how much RAM I could possibly buy for the Dell system. So I started looking for the best deals I could find on DDR4, couldn't find anything locally, but I did find on eBay someone selling a 4x16 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance that I picked up for right at $70. So at this point, I basically had my two systems that I was going to stick with. And because I already have a case and a power supply that we got at the start, I have everything for the Ryzen PC, except for a boot SSD and then a cooler, which we can get something pretty cheap because the 5300G is not going to draw a ton of power. And then for the Dell Precision system, once again, I had everything at this point, except a boot SSD. And so I knew I needed to pick up two SSDs, but I also needed to pick up some networking stuff. I ended up looking at this TrendNet 10 gig switch, which would have multiple two and a half gig ports, as well as two 10 gig SFP plus ports, which would be perfect for this test because I could hook up my NAS to one of the 10 gig ports, hook up my desktop to the other and have a 10 gig link over my NAS, which would be great for the benchmarks at the end. And then I also had the option for two and a half gig for my other server. So on my chart, I put that down as well as the two SSDs I would need for my boot drives. Uh, one of them I decided $25 roughly because it could be a little bit better for the Ryzen system. And then like the cheapest thing I could find on Amazon because for the TrueNAS system, I didn't really need much storage, just something to boot TrueNAS from. And then I also threw in roughly another $15 for an AM4 cooler and then 40 bucks for a 10 gig NIC because I knew I could get that on Amazon with uh, one of the 10 G tech NICs that I've used in the past. And then $20 for another two and a half gig NIC for the Ryzen system. And then that left me with $80 or so for a UPS, which after looking on Facebook marketplace, I felt like that was going to be very doable. So with that, I would have both systems. One would have 10 gig for my NAS, one would have two and a half gig. I'd have the switch for it all. I have my router because I picked that at the start. I was feeling pretty good and I would still have $6 left over on my budget. Well, at least I thought I would. Yeah, you guys probably have already noticed at this point, for some reason, I put in $800 as my total budget. I don't know why. So I thought I was $6 under budget, but if I change this to the actual number, oh no, I am $94 over budget and I've already started buying stuff. Dang it. Okay, so I knew at this point I'd already pretty much locked myself into the Ryzen system. I had actually already purchased this, purchased the motherboard and purchased the RAM. 
And so I started going back and figuring out where I could potentially cut money without having to change my plan too much. So the biggest thing I found was for the 10 gig switch, rather than going with that trend net switch, I went with this other one from Yuan Lei. I have no idea, but it was the cheapest uh, dual 10 gig plus two and a half gig switch I could find. So I was able to pick that up for a little less than $37. I got really lucky because, well, I was already planning on using one of these 10G Tech 10 gig NICs. And so I was going to just pick up one of these off of Amazon for like 40 bucks. Fortunately, they happened to be selling one on Amazon Warehouse for like $31. I found this two and a half gig NIC for $11. And then this Arctic Alpine 23 cooler for $12. For SSDs, I was able to stick below my budget a little bit. Uh, for the Ryzen system, I picked up this Team Group 250 gig SSD, which is still an NVMe uh, Gen 3x4, and they were selling on Amazon for $23. For the TrueNet system, I tried to find like the cheapest thing I could, and I actually stumbled across a listing for one of these 4C SSDs, which is actually what came out of my Steam Deck. Uh, so it's a little 64 gig EMMC module. is an amazing, but I found them selling for nine dollars and uh it seems like they're not available anymore but when i first found it it would have technically been able to ship for nine dollars and get here within the challenge time period so i'm going with that so at this point i had managed to cut my budget down quite a bit to where i had 48 dollars and 24 cents left over so i have a little less than 50 dollars left over to get a ups but everything else i should have once it all gets here <gasps> We have hard drives. All right, I think we have our TrueNAS system mostly assembled. Uh, I have both of our hard drives hooked up and we have our boot SSD, although it's, uh, it's a little awkward because I wasn't able to screw it in place. I'm going to try installing TrueNAS scale and let's see what happens. Two hours later. All right, well, things didn't go exactly as planned. First of all, to get the hard drives working, I did have to put in these little adapters that server part deals sends with their drives, or at least any of the drives that require the power disable feature. But uh, the drives are up and working. The one problem I ran into is that this little EMMC SSD did not work. And uh, I probably should have been smart enough to at least assume it might have issues. Fortunately, since I bought it off of Amazon, I could probably return it. And instead, I just bought the cheapest SATA SSD I could find, which happened to be this Silicon Power one that I already owned as well. Unfortunately, that cost me like $15, so it's about six more dollars than what I was going to spend, which means I have even less money now for my UPS. So that's a bummer, but... I did get this NAS up and running. I got it all configured, everything's working, and at idle, it's sitting at around 23 to 24 watts, which is not bad. Now I just need to hope that everything shows up without issue for the AMD system, and I can get that built and uh, get everything configured, and hopefully, hopefully this all wasn't a terrible idea. Nothing has blown up yet. This video was going too well, and it's a hardware haven video, so we need some amount of jank. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Okay. It's what? a lot more than I was expecting to get for $500. You had no Raspberry Pi, so I had to ding you a point or two there. I think I'm gonna have to go with 